All right, welcome back. It's just about three minutes after the hour. It'll be three after nine Pacific time, 10 o'clock um, Mountain time, 11 o'clock Central time, and noon, 03, Eastern time. Lunch time. Thank you for joining us for this Satori software webinar, Maximizing Postal Discounts with Bulk Mailer. We are extremely pleased to have you here for this one, as you probably saw from my mail. I'm very excited about this one. It's kind of cool because uh, a lot of times these things are driven by, well, a variety of different things, cool things we have going on at Satori. But this one's fun because there's actual money. We get to talk about money this time, Kim. I'm, right. I'm very excited about this. And before we get started, let's make sure that we get the housekeeping things out of the way. First off, if you are into this whole social media thing, Kim, are you into, you, do, you, do you tweet? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So if you're into the whole social media thing like Kim, up on that sort of thing, you can connect with, I assume with Kim, but also with Satori Software via Twitter, LinkedIn, and on Facebook. You do that face place thing? Sometimes, yeah. You do? <laughs> All right. You're good at these things. Uh, also, had a question come in. Yes, this webinar is being recorded, and uh, my job will be to get that posted up on satorisoftware.com in the webinars department. You should see that sometime this afternoon, if all goes well, but generally by the next day we post these things up. So in the event that uh, you missed something, or perhaps you want to pass it along to somebody else, you'll be able to go listen and view the recording of this session. All right, so my favorite part of the housekeeping items is the question box. And of course, on the right hand side of the screen is your question box. And some folks are using that already. We're seeing stuff coming in. Please use that. If you got the stuff you want to throw out there, I'll interrupt Kim during the presentation and we will uh, try to get as many questions out uh, as we can. Otherwise, there is a slide towards the end of the deck where we'll be pausing formally for questions. So don't be shy. Load them in there. Uh, it's always fun. Uh, I will mention that uh, this webinar is scheduled to last about 60 minutes. Kim has a lot of slides. We've got a lot of cool stuff. It turns out that there's a lot of ways to save money. That's right. Yeah. There's a whole ton of ways to save money, and Kim has this broken up into uh, a couple of different ways to slice it. And uh, one of them, there's there's regulatory things that you can do, and of course, bulk mailer helps with that. But then there's also some tweaks within the product that Kim's going to be covering that'll help you save money as well. So we're going to try to come at this from a couple of different angles. It's a lot of material. I'll, I'll be straight up with you. So uh, we might run long in the event that you have to drop off. Don't worry. We are going to record the whole thing right through to the bitter end. And that, uh, that entire recording will be posted up there. So you can always come back and pick that up at the end there. All right. So let's see, who are we Who are we actually talking to today? Well, first off, Kim Mock, Senior Product Manager for Satori Software. She owns Bulk Mailer. That's right. It's hers. Well, technically. Her, her <laughs> and a cast of very talented thousands. We've got a we've got a really talented development team that's been working on Bulk Mailer, and uh, and you guys are probably familiar with our support department who who've been working with the product for years, and um, and we're happy to talk to you today about getting getting the most bang for your buck and and getting those postal discounts. That's fantastic. So Kim Mock, uh, she'll be our expert today. She knows this product inside and out, and she's also got some postal experience, don't you? A little bit, yep. Yeah, she's uh, one of those people that you see at the forums, and uh, mm -hmm. Postal Service knows her by name. Do you, uh, do you and Meg and Brennan, do you guys know each other? I've met her a few times, the yes. Post, the Postmaster General, that's yep. pretty cool. So Kim's got the background here that we need. And of course, there's me just kind of hanging out and pushing the buttons. My name's Rob Perrin, and I'm the Director of Multimedia Marketing for Satori Software. I'll be your host today. I will be the one proctoring your questions and passing those along to Kim. So like I say, make sure you get those into the question box. For our agenda today, we're going to do a little overview. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the concepts that you're going to need going into this. Then we're going to talk about saving money via shrinking, saving money via expanding. Now, don't don't worry, Kim's. That's kind of how she diced and sliced this, but it's going to make sense, I promise, as we work our way into it. And then, as I mentioned, we will have the questions and answers section. So feel free to uh, load those in there. We'll answer what we can. We'll work on into it from there. Now. Let's see, Kim. You uh, you actually need this fancy clicker thing here, and uh, you're going to want that to advance. And I'll go ahead and get you onto the next slide. And believe it or not, this is our overview. Now, I, I looked at this and I figured out that money means well, money equals what? 
Well, money is is basically the discounts that you're going to be able to get from bulk mailer are a combination of your ability to focus or shrink your focus down to something that's really targeted and your ability to expand um, both your your mailing list and also um, the different ways that you're going to be able to to use bulk mailer. So it's it's kind of that idea of of, of shrinking and expanding and it's almost like breathing, right? You breathe in, you breathe out. And so having that balance of, of focus and expansion can really, um, can really fine tune your mailing and then fine tune those postal discounts that you can get. And of course, in any industry, no matter what industry you're talking about, there's really two ways to save money. One of them is to cut back or to to reduce, to come up mm-hmm. with ways to shrink things down. You can, you know, uh, the other way is, of course, to expand your audience, to get to get more customers, et cetera. And so it sounds like there's a very close parallel here with this webinar. Exactly. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's All save right. some money. Okay. So like Rob said, we've got actually quite a bit to cover. Um, and so... Let's just kind of dive right in. So let's talk. Let's kind of look at the different ways that you can shrink your 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 list, shrink your focus, and uh, and in this case, actually shrink the size of your mail piece. So one of the really interesting things that's um, that's not something that you would do particularly in a software product, but that you can do from just a mail makeup standpoint is actually take your, if you have a flat size piece, consider making a little bit smaller and trying to get it into a letter size piece. Or if you're sending a parcel, see if you can shrink that size down into a flat. And actually you can save quite a bit of money just by changing the size of your mail piece. So if you think about like a nine by 13 envelope, so it's a pretty, pretty standard, or a nine by 12 envelope, that's pretty standard for, you know, shipping legal documents or, or, you know, just even just sending out a letter, you could send it out in a nine by 12 envelope but that goes at a flat mail size, you know, mail piece rate, right. which is going to be about 47 cents if you're doing pre-sort, right? And that adds up. And that can add up over time. Now, if you just take that nine by 12 mail piece and fold it in half, that becomes a six by nine, which can actually qualify for a letter size. And then that can actually, just by folding it once in half, you can actually drastically cut the postage that you're paying just based on on the actual size of your mail piece. So um, so it's kind of an interesting thing because even something like a catalog or something that you might not think would be something that's easily foldable, can, there are actually interesting ways that you can do that. And so there are, are I'm not a folding expert, but there are a lot of folding experts that are out there that, um, that have all these different ways that you can actually make up a mail piece and you could actually cover quite a bit of content in just a letter size mail piece. So you've got kind of a a restricted area with a letter, but depending on how you fold it, and there are really interesting ways, there's, um, there are some videos that you can go out on YouTube and see these really interesting ways that people will fold their mail piece that actually, in addition to being able to cover a lot of content, they're actually really beautiful and they're really interactive. And so that, that kind of gains that extra interaction point. And they can be attention getting as well. You get these pieces of mail that are uh, to the person receiving them. They don't, quite match anything else in the box. They don't get lost in the bills. That's the cool part about them. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, anything that we can do to to make your, the message stand out to that mail recipient definitely increases the value of that mail that's being sent out. So in addition to the postal discounts that you'll get, you also get the increase in response. So if I fold my mailing into the shape of a swan, is there a special discount for that? Uh, you know, you might have to get a, a special dispensation from the post office. You might want to put an envelope around that. But uh, but you could definitely do some some interesting things there, and there's some there's some ways you can even do that in an automated fashion with some of the machines that are out there today that uh, that are really cool. Okay, so I'm taking notes on this first way to save money. Take a look at how your mail is presented, how it's folded. Exactly. I'm, yep. I'm calling this the origami point. <laughs> there you go. So the next thing is um, is actually specific to first class mail, but um, this is one of the things that the post office has started to offer recently in, in the last couple of rate cases. They actually have been offering your second ounce of mail for free. So if you're sending first class mail, you're sending a bill or a statement or an invoice, something along those lines, you can actually sit, ship that second ounce of mail absolutely free. So what can you do with that? Well, you can add additional advertising. You can add additional features or information. There are all different, all kinds of inf- 
additional things that you can add to your first class letter that uh, that are going to add value to the end user and also if you're a mail service provider to your to a mail owner that um, that really can enhance their their mailing experience and there's no additional postage so you're telling me that two ounces mails for the price of one ounce exactly exactly so you can get a lot more content into two ounces than you can in one ounce and two ounces is, a, is that's a lot that is quite a bit of mail like that's that gets to be um, a pretty hefty mail piece which again is going to get a little bit more attention um, you know there are different ways that you can that you can add additional information to that mail piece for absolutely free as far as your postage goes you're just paying for your your ink and your paper at that point why did i not know this well this is something that you know honestly the post office has been doing this for a couple of years now and at first they they really you know touted it like oh you know this is the first year that you're going to get the second ounce free and they've kind of lost track of of that message that this is actually a really good deal for first class mailers so uh, so this is something that uh, that we're really excited about because you know anything that's free that's a good thing for, for the mailing industry. There's not that many things that are free. Anymore. That's very true. <laughs> you do still have to ship your first ounce. You can't just ship the second ounce. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm only shipping my free ounce today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know when you when you have that additional um, that additional content that you want to ship out, then you can definitely um, you can definitely send it with for no additional postage. Cool. Second point. Free right. ounce. Free ounce. Yep. Yeah. So the next one is, um, it's actually a really big topic. And basically what we want to do is focus your list. So this is all about the focus, the drilling in on what really is the, uh, is the core message that you want to send out. So when you say list, what you're referring to is, is I have this concept of a mailing in my head. I have this thing that's going to go out and then my list is the people that I want to get it to. Exactly. Okay. So that's the audience, right? That's the audience for your message that you're sending out. So it could be okay. bill statements. It could be advertising. It could and be, I've got this list yep. that uh, it's, it's the same list that I used for my Christmas cards last year. Mm -hmm. And I've got it here. I haven't touched it since then, but it's ready to go. Right. So, okay. so what you'll want to do first is you want to kind of make sure that there's no extra stuff on that list. So if for some reason you have um, you have duplicates in your list, you're definitely gonna wanna remove those. Um, you're gonna wanna obviously run through your CAS, you know, your CAS processing, your, your NCOA link to find any, uh, any undeliverable records. So one of the things in bulk mailer that you can use is, uh, is we actually have two different groups in the group section of bulk mailer that you'll wanna kinda pay attention to. One is all corrected records and one is called all deliverable records. And there's a little bit of a difference between these two groups. So the all corrected records just takes the records and the information that was provided during the CAS processing. So that's just gonna be your error codes, you know, maybe the um, there was no apartment number and there should have been things along those lines. Um, what that'll do is the all corrected records will just exclude the ones that don't have a, a zip plus four basically. Now the all deliverable records actually go a little bit further so the all deliverable records is actually going to take a look at your move update processing and if there was any problem finding a forward for that move wait, so, wait, wait. move update that's yep. the first time you've used that term that move update so i've got my christmas list from last year mm -hmm. and I, I suppose what you're trying to tell me is people might have moved on that list right i mean a huge percentage of our of our nation moves every single year it's you know over 10 percent of the of the entire nation moves every single year so you know it's it's pretty much october now from christmas to now it's pretty likely that that a significant number of your of your list should have moved in that period of time okay so under deliverable one of the things that would happen is that would fix that i'd be able to follow those people that had filed a change of address right so you can do that and you can use there's actually two different ways that you can get that information which is kind of an interesting point so the first one is called ncoa link and this is a way to get the information that the post office has on hand for all the people that have moved so you know if if your friend and John Smith moved from Seattle to Wisconsin, then uh, then you can get his new Wisconsin address. However, 
John may or may not have actually filed that move with the post office. So the NCOA link only has the moves that were filed with the post office. That's that little card that people used to fill out, right? Yep. Yeah, there was, there's the card. You can actually do it online now, but you have to provide a credit card. There's some barriers to be able to do that, right? I'm not giving the USPS my credit card. <laughs> yeah, you want to write him a check. That's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and so one of the interesting things that we have available inside of Bulk Mailer is is an additional move update service called ECOA. And what it is, is it's actually a database of moves that were found not from USPS data, but actually from other data. So this is like utility information, magazine subscriptions. So if you, um, you know, maybe you don't submit your move to the post office, but you'll tell People Magazine that you moved from, you know, from point A to point B. Mine is National Geographic magazine. Let's get it straight, okay? <laughs> okay, maybe I, mine I is People magazine. All right. <laughs> but, uh, but you... But you would tell your magazine subscription, you would tell your utility company that you'd moved. And uh, and so we have access to a database of all these moves, and that allows you to kind of complete the picture of all the moves that you have available in your list. So you definitely want to make sure that you run through both because you can actually see, especially as, as we be, kind of advance into this more digital world. Well, this sounds way more effective. I mean, I... I, I I think I mentioned this to you a couple of days ago. I, I don't remember the last time I filled out a change of address card. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, it, and you know, that's really becoming but the norm. But my magazines make it to me. Yeah. You want your magazines and, um, you know, especially with the younger generations, they don't think about the post office when they move. And the younger generations, especially when you think about your 20s, I don't know about you, but I moved a lot in my 20s. Yeah. I was still in the age where... I told the post office every single time, but, uh, but you know, the, the younger generation aren't think really thinking I've about that. I told the post office <laughs> since my twenties and that was a while ago. Yeah. So, uh, so having access to this extra service that sure. allows you to, to kind of complete the picture of all the moves in your list can really, um, can really kind of enhance the quality. And then also if there is some type of a problem during move update where maybe somebody moved, but they moved out of the country or they moved and they didn't provide a forwarding address, then uh, then you can use that all und the all deliverable records uh, group there in bulk mailer to uh, to filter those records out, so you don't have to um, you don't have to worry about those, right? Because you only want to be able to send the mail that's actually going to reach its recipient, right? You want to make sure that it's going to have the most impact, and um, and there's no use in sending a piece of mail that's going to go straight into the trash can. Gotcha. Or the recycle bin. So <laughs> this yeah. day and age. Come this on. day and age. Yep. So a couple of questions about the second ounce that have come in here. Yeah. And, uh, let's grab these right now while we're thinking about second ounces because that seems to have have struck people. Mm -hmm. uh, first question they're asking is whether or not bulk mailer is a second ounce aware. It is. So um, so you would just enter in your piece weight. And then, uh, and then, based on that weight, we would apply the appropriate postage. So, so if, if my you, piece weight is uh, 0.9 ounces, it's going to be a rate, and if it's 1.8 ounces, it's going to be the same rate. Exactly. Because I get exactly. that second ounce for free, and bulk mailer it, knows that. Yep. Yep. The other question is, um, somebody asked if I if I drop it in the box, if I if I'm not bulk mailing, but I'm sending a Christmas card to grandma. And yep. uh, do I get the second ounce free for that as well? I believe that is true. I, I would have to take a look at the rate cards, but I do believe that's true. Okay. Yeah. You will, you'll still need to make sure that you're applying all the other letter characteristics. So you can't ma mail those fancy square postcards, you know, they're, they're the square uh, Christmas cards that they have out. Those those have an extra surcharge just because they're oddly really shaped. you really didn't like my swan idea. <laughs> I just will come back to that. Uh, NCOA, does that use utility company? NCOA, well. yeah. so, so the Cause... NCOA is National Change of Address. That's the okay. USPS data. Okay. The ECOA, which okay. is the Enhanced great, great. Change of Address, that uses the utility information and um, magazine subscriptions and some other proprietary databases. So NCOA is the card you fill out. And yep. ECOA, is it enhanced or is it? It's enhanced, extended. We we just kind of abbreviated it to ECOA because it's it's easier to remember. Okay. But ECOA, we like our that's the one that does the sort of expanded set. That's the one that would pick me up. Yep. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Can would you use both? I would recommend both. And so you'd run NCOA to pick up. Does ECOA then pick up the? Okay. 
I, yeah, I so so the ECOA does not include any of the USPS data. Oh. So that's kind of the interesting thing to note is um, is due to the restrictions that the USPS has around the NCOA data, you sure, can't combine it. You, you can't yeah. combine it in a in an automated fashion with any other data. So um, so you do have to run both of them separately, and so uh, so to get to that complete picture. Okay, I got you. So yes, yep. they're not they you you wouldn't run run one or the other. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, okay. you would you would run both, and uh, and so the the way to access that inside a bulk mailer is is that's available in the data services. So if you if you're in bulk mailer and you go to the address quality tab, mm -hmm. it'll be down at the bottom. It's that bottom link there for data services, and then you can go through and and select that ECOA option. So NCOA is built in with bulk mailer. Yep, and ECOA is as well. They're just in different areas because according to the USPS regulations, we can't tie them both together. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so both of those are going to be in that that address quality tab of, of bulk mailer. Gotcha, so, run both. Yep, run okay. both of them. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. So another... Um, Another kind of thing, since we're talking about the data services area, that would that's a really good way for you to focus your list is to um, is to actually start finding any records that aren't going to be as as a uh, apt to respond to your message. So we do have a service inside of our data services called so the suppression suite. And what that is, is it's a way for you to flag records that are on the do not mail list, that are in correctional facilities, or for people who are deceased. And so as you might imagine, those are people that aren't going to be quite as receptive to receiving mail. So especially if it's, if it's advertising mail, right? For example, if you're a member of the DMA, and you run your list through one of these processes, you're actually bound to to suppress those records. So it's uh, it's part of that whole you know trying to make mail the friend and not the enemy, right? You don't mm -hmm. want to you don't want people to be to be hostile to your to your mail message. So um, so we do have that service available inside the data services, and it's going to flag those records that are deceased on the do not mail list or in a correctional facility. Deceased, I completely get. And yep. do not mail, I get. Someone has voluntarily stated, I don't want to get mail. Right. Correctional facility, though. Yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting thing uh, because actually the, the correctional infrastructure restricts what mail can actually be sent to an inmate at, at certain locations. Really? And it really restricts both what they can receive and what they can send out. So it, if you're sending a catalog to someone who's at a correctional facility, it's unlikely that they'll be able to order anything from you, for example, because they wouldn't be allowed to to receive that package unless you're shipping like blankets or something. Well, you make jail sound like no fun at all. <laughs> I think that's kind of the point. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so so being able to suppress those those records that are really unlikely to actually be able to to receive or respond to your message, right? I suppose those are wasted. On, I mean, my postage is wasted, my printing costs, the labor. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense to send it to somebody who yep. can't or won't respond. Right. It's it's you know it's kind of that question of of where does that mail get put in the in the recycle bin, right? Sometimes if it's an undeliverable record, it's the post office that puts that in the recycle bin. But then if you're sending it to someone who's on the do, do not mail list and they get your your postcard or your advertisement and they think okay I don't I don't like this type of mail and they're going to put it right in their recycle bin so they're all there are many different places and that's the best that, case that scenario happen. because they could actually be very angry with me for not respecting their do not mail exactly so I could lose them as a customer yeah and and especially with de deceased you have to be really sensitive to those type mm. of things you know I it's it's one of those things where you don't want to be sending mail to someone who's not there because the impact on the, on the other people who are who may still be at that address that makes complete sense not very sensitive no definitely yeah. not and so um so you can flag those records with the the suppression suite in the data services area and then again that all deliverable records group inside a bulk mailer is going to filter those records out so i've got my christmas list i break it out here and i go through these steps and i uh i get my second ounce and i fold it appropriately just give me a, a, a ballpark. What kind of money am I going to save from cleaning up my list like this? Well, it, it's all additive, right? Okay. So you're going to have the postage savings that are going to come from from making sure that the mail piece is the right size. Right. You're going to get the, uh, you're obviously going to have your second ounce free. So that, that's kind of a tangible benefit there. And then you're also not going to be mailing to put, 
places that aren't going to be responsive. So you're actually going to be mailing a little bit less, but the response rate that you'll get from the people you do mail to is going to be more impactful. So it's kind of that ROI per piece. And that really varies based on what the message is and, and what you're sending out. But that can be, that can be, you know, hundreds of dollars. It can be tens of thousands of dollars, depending on, on what type of mailing you're doing. That's real money. It, it is. Right. It really is. So um, we could probably spend an entire webinar on this slide, so I don't want to go too far into it. But um, but basically, being able to 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 kind of get the full picture of all the mailing that you have in your list, all the the recipients on your list, and then filtering out those people who are less likely to respond. So um, so shrinking down, you know, focusing really on those um, on those people who are going to be going to be the best targets for your message. Okay. So we just talked a lot about shrinking. I hope you're feeling really small. Now let's talk about expanding. So <laughs> like the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> We're not quite there yet. It is starting to feel a lot like fall. But um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, about different ways of, of changing your male makeup and then also um, just taking advantage of the different types of, of discounts that are available that are out there. So the first one to consider is uh, is carrier route. So carrier out mail is kind of an interesting step up from what you would consider your, your automation rate. So that's your standard pre-sort rate with a barcode, right? If you have a, a certain amount of density inside your list, you can actually achieve additional discounts by preparing your mail in carrier routes. So basically you're gonna create a bundle of mail and that bundle of mail is gonna go directly to the mail carrier. Okay, and wait, then, wait, wait, wait. When you say density within my list, what you're talking about is addresses that happen to be close together geographically. Exactly, exactly. So, so if, if I'm you after have, everybody in the same block, that would be considered a dense mailing. Yeah, or okay. even if you're if you're um if you're doing a mailing that's targeted at a specific city, sometimes you don't even have to have that many pieces. You don't have to have every single Single piece on the block in order to get some of these rates. Gotcha. You just have to have most of the, the pieces. But it's in an not area. scattered all over the country. It's things right. that are actually geographically related to one degree or another. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, um, so for example, if you are mailing standard mail letters and you have 125 pieces for a specific carrier, and the carrier may have 400 to 1,000 places that they stop throughout their day. Um, if you if you only have 125 of those, you can qualify for carrier out high density rates. And I abbreviate that as CRHD because I was going to run out of room on the slide here. So, um, so if you were sending that mail as an automation three digit, it would be 26.6 cents per piece. But if you were going to send it as carrier out high density, so just by that extra step of, wow, you can actually save over five cents a piece each each that's each piece and then you you know and that's so multiply that by 125 pieces and bulk mailer knows for, this yeah and so you just select the the carrier out saturation option inside a bulk mailer now there do is, i have to know that it's dense or does bulk mailer then look at it and know it's it'll dense? it'll know it so you can select that option and if it's not dense enough then it'll prepare it at the at the the automation level. How cool is that? Yeah. So there's one trick to this, though. You do need to make sure that all of your carrier routes are prepared in what's called walk sequence order. So what? So walk I assume that's the order that they're yeah. going to deliver them in. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to have, you know, there's the, the well certain made. route, right, that they walk sure. throughout the day in the sequence of their route, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so you do need to have the the sequence of your addresses to match up with their what their actual walk is. So, um, so in order to get that information. We do have that available in our data services. There's a walk sequence um, addition that you can do inside of data services. And uh, if you do a lot of walk sequence mail, we actually have an unlimited option, which is uh, which is pretty cool. And you uh, and so you can apply that to every single mailing. What's and a lot of mail? So any, it really depends on your mailing. So one of the things that's interesting about carrier route is I hear from a lot of people, well, I don't have enough volume to do carrier route mail. It's not really about volume. It has to do more with just the, the way that your mail piece is distributed. And so if you have say 500 records, but they're all in the same zip code, 
there's actually a pretty high probability that you could qualify for carry route mail. Five cents a piece, it's worth looking into. Exactly. And, you know, and that's just with 125 pieces per route, depending on how much you actually have, you could qualify all the way up to saturation rates. So even if I'm a small mailer, but I'm targeting into, so suppose that uh, maybe I'm a com community center. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm targeting into a specific area. I could easily qualify for this because my people are likely to be in the community surrounding me. Exactly, exactly. So it's not about the size of your list, so it's about the distribution. I don't have to do a trillion pieces of mail in my mailing. I could have, uh, just after my members, this could work. And exactly. five cents a mail, that pet pays for itself. Yeah, it, it really adds huh. up. Uh, yep. <laughs> okay, I had no idea. Yep. And if you if you have more than 125 pieces, you can qualify if you have 300 pieces per route, you can qualify for high density plus, which is a little bit better savings. Or if you have um, either 75% of the whole route, or if you have 90% of all the residences in an area, you can qualify for saturation rates, which is a savings of 6.4 cents per piece. Whoa. So um, so that, you know, you take that, multiply it by the number of pieces Boy, that you have on really your list. Fast. That's, and that's a big discount. That is a huge discount. So that's that's real money in your pocket. There's a little bit of extra preparation that's required for carrier route mail. You obviously have to bundle um, so that you, you so that each little bundle is available for that for that carrier. That's that's but, almost a quarter of the rate. Yeah, it's like and a, so it's like a fifth of the rate. I'm I'm not a math major. I'm doing it <laughs> in my head, but that's all, that's like a fifth of the postage. Yeah, and it, it really adds up. And and so the 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 additional work that you'll have preparing the carrier outside of it, I think that the discount more than makes up for that. Every five bucks in postage, I get a buck back. Yeah, oh, that adds up really fast. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's a really good deal. Huh. So this is just for letters. The um, kind of the interesting thing is, is there's also some significant savings that you can have for flats. So uh, a lot of flat mailers are pretty familiar with carrier route, but again, it's all about the distribution of your mail list. But um, but even just going to carrier route basic for standard mail can actually drop your postage pretty significantly. Flats obviously they're little bit more expensive to start with, but the savings are even more depending on, on and, how you're doing this. And this so. takes us back to point one, right? Flats are more expensive because of their their size, right? Right. They're, they're, they're not, I mean, you could have saved money by folding these as well. Yeah, but this is a different way if you, for some reason, can't fold it or, or you know, you, you want to maintain the size of your piece because sure. that's the way that it's going to stand out for mm -hmm. you, then um, then this is a way to save money even if you're still mailing a flat size piece. Gotcha. So um, so it's, it's a really good way to, to be able to, to get those additional discounts. And for Carrier Out Basic, you actually don't have to have much at all. You only have to have 10 pieces per route to get that carrier route basic rate. I'm sorry, what, what was the number again? Just 10 pieces per, per carrier route. So if you think about a zip code, it's gonna have maybe 20 carriers, and then you only have to have 10 pieces per, per carrier in that area. So that's like 200 pieces. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy to qualify These for that. These thresholds are lower than I expected. It's funny because when you and I first started talking about doing this webinar and you were all excited because there were ways to save money that people didn't know about, that they could just sort of just modify their behavior a little bit and save a significant amount of money. I thought you were talking about 10,000 piece mailings. I thought you were talking about 100,000 piece mailings. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I ever going to justify this? But this is... This, yeah, this, this can is apply, not bad at all. This can apply at any level. This is this is for any mailer. This is cool. Yeah, yeah. So so for flats, there's there's some uh, some savings just for for preparing just ten pieces per route, and then if you go into saturation uh, for for flats, you get a really big discount. So uh, so if you're if you're saturating flats in in a um, in in a carrier route area, then you can actually wow. save. Almost half. Almost half. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a pretty good a pretty good discount there. And um, there are those of you who may be familiar with the uh, the Every Door Direct Mail program or EDDM. That's basically what a saturation flat is. It's just a fancy marketing word for it. Don't pick on marketing. <laughs> a couple of quick questions for you. Um, let's see. Isaac at, is asking. He says uh, we use carrier route, but we don't bundle because our size is six by eleven. Is that okay? Um, so you should be, there are different ways to bundle. So for example, if you have enough pieces that you might have an entire tray of, um, you might have an entire tray that's specifically for a carrier route, then you wouldn't have to bundle. But um, obviously you'll want to check with your, um, with your, your postage, you know, your, your, 
postal facility people and make sure that you're preparing the mail correctly. But um, but yeah, there are there are cases when you wouldn't have to actually physically bundle. And one of those is if you're if you're mailing the entire tray is just for that carrier. And there are sometimes you can uh, you can just put little cards in to mark where each carrier is. So and Dan's got a question. Mm -hmm. So these things that we're talking about here, we're talking about the flats, we're talking about carrier route and things like that. If I take my list and I import it into bulk mailer and I'm getting ready to do and I go through and I do the the list cleanup. So I do my suppression and, and that sort of thing. Will bulk mailer then pop up and does it automatically tell me that I can save additional money if I did saturation or how do I how do I how do I? How do I engage this once I'm in bulk mailer? Right. So, um, so what you'll want to do is is uh, kind of activating the carrier route option happens inside mail sort. Okay. So, um, so there's a, a place in the mail sort wizard where you're actually going to selecting be selecting your sort tiers. So that's selecting basically the types of discount that you want to try and qualify for. And on that page, you've got some drop downs there and you can select those options of, you know, carrier route saturation, or you can select carrier route um, LOT, which is the, the carrier route basic rate that we have up on the screen here. You can select automation or non-automation. And so, um, so you can select those options there and then bulk mailer will automatically take a look at your settings versus your list and apply the best rate that it can. So okay. you would so you need have to turn to these things on yeah. and then bulk mailer is going to come back and tell you good, no problem or, but it's not going to, will it let you try to apply this if you don't qualify? It'll, it'll let you select the option, mm -hmm. but if you don't qualify, then you just wouldn't get that rate. Gotcha. So there's, so, there's no downside to turning this on. There really isn't. So, um, so one of the things that I would suggest is if you haven't experimented with carrier route, just do Turn a couple sorts and, sure. and compare the results and see if that's going to be a benefit for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to feel pretty bad if I turn this on and there's a huge savings <laughs> on my Christmas card list here because well, you know, it's... I've been missing out on this. <laughs> I'm going to feel pretty silly. Yeah, but you know, it's just, it's really easy to just kick the tires. You know, run a run a sort and and see what the results are. Compare it to what you had before. Vicky is curious. She wants to know. She says uh, she understands that. Uh, to use saturation mailing, you have to be a nonprofit. Not necessarily true. No. Um, so the saturation discounts um, are actually available for um, for any standard mailer. It's not specific to. Um, now there are there are you know different prices that are available for nonprofit mailers. So you can get even more discount if you're a nonprofit. Um, we didn't include nonprofit as a as a discount point cause because either you're it's not optional. Most people don't have either a you're a nonprofit or you're not, right? Yeah. And and if you are, then you should be using the nonprofit rates because they're they're obviously much better. I'm nonprofit for this mailing, but not for that mailing. Generally doesn't work. <laughs> Unless you're a mail service provider and you're gotcha. and you're providing for nonprofits, then sure. But okay. um but uh, but yeah, for the as far as the the saturation rates, those are available for anyone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we talked a lot about carrier routes, which I, I think are are kind of an interesting way to get to to get that extra discount there. Well, it makes sense because I mean you're doing the work for the post office at that point, right? They yep. they sort the mail into the carrier route. If you do it for them, of course you should get a discount. Yep, and yep. that's that's the whole basis around pretty much all the rate structures that we have today. They call it work sharing because basically we're you know the mail the mail preparer is is doing the work and then the post office doesn't have to. So so we, we get a what little a cut for that. wonderful euphemism that is. <laughs> yep. So we share the work and, and we share the benefit. Gotcha. So the next thing to kind of consider is, um, is especially if you have a number of smaller mailings that you do, consider combining them. So this is kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting way that you can actually get some some discounts by combining multiple lists to um, to basically achieve the the more fine sort options, which is going to be the the lower rates. So for example, if you have um, if you have several mail pieces that are very similar, so for example, if you're mailing three or four different types of postcard in a day, right? For example, you might have one that's your um, your early notification postcard, you know, maybe payment due, but they're all kind of the similar size. You're all going to be se sending them all as standard mail or all as first class mail. Then you can actually combine them into a single mailing. And uh, you will want to make sure that you differentiate them using a weight and the thickness so that uh, 
so that if you have like for example first class mail you need to make sure that that you appropriately label what the weight is so you get the appropriate weight for that um, you'll also want to identify the thickness of each piece so that the sort knows how many pieces can, are, are going to fit in each tray but if by combining multiple mailings all together and then applying what, what we call mixed weights or manifesting what you can do is you can actually use all of those different lists to qualify for the lower discount so for example if you had three different lists and they all qualified for basically three digit rates if you combine them together you could possibly qualify for some five digit rates which are going to be a lot lower so um, so this is kind of an, an interesting way of, of just kind of tweaking the process you would need to to prepare the mailings all together so you'd have a tray that had pieces from all the different uh, the different postcards that you had there but uh, but you can actually mail them all together and uh, and you get that that lower rate because you're you're more finely sorting all those pieces together I recall that there, there's a word for this isn't there that talks about combining disparate mailings yeah so there's a, di a couple different ways of of, uh, of doing this so the way to do this in bulk mailer we use mm -hmm. just the mixed weights or the manifesting gotcha. which is going to um, which is going to actually label out and there's a report that gets printed out that shows you know which pieces go with which mailing and and what their weights are however there are some additional things that you can do outside of bulk mailer that kind of add an additional level so there are ways that you can co-palette and co-mail and co-mingle Lark so, just saved me here. It just came in via the question box. Commingling. That's the yep, word I was yep. looking for. Yeah, Thanks, so commingling is is definitely a little bit more gotcha. of an advanced feature okay. than what we have available in right. bulk mailer, but there are tools, um, like for example, our Monticello products can uh, can allow for some of those those um, those kind of more robust gotcha. versions yeah, of no, combining you, mailings. Yeah. We were trigger, triggering a memory from a meeting some time <laughs> ago. I was like, I know there's a word for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think about the co-mail, co-palette, co-mingle, those are all um, all terms that you would do outside of bulk mailer but if you want to do some some pretty basic manifesting then that's something that you can achieve with um, with our uh, our mixed weights add-on Julie wants to know about uh, there are uh, there's differences between three digit and five digit rates right 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 yeah. yeah so so generally the 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 smaller the area that you're targeting the the uh, the lower the rate so a five digit rate is going to be lower than a three digit rate three digit rate is going to be lower than a mixed rate gotcha. so okay. yep so the more fine the sort the better the discount right down to walk sequence exactly okay yep. I'm getting this yep. all right so the next thing is uh, is to kind of consider where you're depositing your mail so um, so a lot of, of mailers will just deposit at their local post office or uh, or their local BMEU. However, depending on where you drop your mail, you can actually get additional discounts. So. Um, so for letter mail, you can drop at either an NDC, which is a national distribution center, or at an SCF, the sectional center facilities. And, um, and if you're like Seattle, you actually have both of those locations in one facility. And what you can do is by depositing at those locations uh, and shipping the mail directly to those major processing facilities yourself, you can actually get a discount on those. And so the discounts are actually pretty uh, pretty uniform across the board. So the NDC discount for standard letters is about 3.6 cents. And then for SCFs, um, it's 4.5 cents. So basically the closer you are to, to the final location where that mail piece is going to be delivered, and then you, if you deposit it at a sorting facility, then um, then you can get an extra discount because basically you're doing the trucking work for the post office. It's again part of that work share, right? And so um, so basically by you being the the shipper, by you doing doing the the actual legwork to get it to that sorting facility, you get a good cut of that. So you mentioned that Seattle has um, an NDC and an SCF combined. Yep, yep. Why would I use the NDC if the SCF rate is lower? Well, for Seattle, obviously, you would you would definitely want to go for the SCF okay, just rate. Making sure because, that they're, yeah, maybe and, and bulk there. mailer will will know that, right? So if please you, sir, charge me more. <laughs> no, we don't want to do that at all. So if you if you're um, in the Seattle area and you select both of those facilities, bulk mailer will actually intelligently select the best 
discount. Okay, so, so it will. So this yes. is so once again, this is all I have to do is turn it on, and bulk mailer is going to come back and say, "Sure, hey, no, yep. by the way, did you know?" Yep, exactly. Okay. So it's gonna it's gonna go in and it's gonna try and select that best rate. So, um, but, would you say that? I, and this is kind of an aside, but as the product owner. When you're making product decisions, do you design bulk mailer to try to get the best rates? Is that is that a specific goal that you make when a change gets discussed in development and you say, mm -hmm. where are we going with this? And you say, I, it's important that it always come up with the best rates. Yeah, and that that is actually a really good um, consideration. And we do that with pretty much anything to do with sorting and, um, and kind of the default options that we have available. And so we always want to make sure that our customers are getting the best postal discounts that they can. There are different ways that you can um, that you can kind of structure your mailing. So maybe if speed is your is your major factor, um, we actually try and and, and set the defaults to go for postage savings. Okay. And, um, but there are always ways that you can kind of change things up just to get, you know, if you have a different uh, goal for your mailing, that's not postage discounts. And it might require that I then, go in and turn something on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that, so I'm going to need to experiment a little bit to understand where my best savings are. Yeah. So again, it's that, it's that try, you know, start, start tweaking with the settings a little bit, run a couple sample sorts to see what's going to work best for you. And, uh, and these, uh, these entry locations can really be uh, a really good way to do that. So for example, if we wanted to deposit our mail at the Seattle SCF, we can get that four 0.5 cents for the mail that's going to be in that SCF area, so in the Seattle area. But if I also have a bunch of mail that I'm going to be sending to, um, say, San Francisco, there's an other, is there another SCF in San Francisco. So if I take a truck and I ship it down and I have a bunch of mail that I'm going to ship down, then I can get a discount on my mail that's going to San Francisco as well. So that's called drop shipping. And there's a there's a whole section in the discounts area of, of the mail sort wizard that allows you to select which facilities that you want to deposit at. And um, and then you can, you can make that choice as to which ones you want to deposit at. And then those are the locations where you're going to get those discounts. This work sharing makes complete sense. So in the event that I just hand carry my mail piece and put it on somebody's doorstep, I pretty much saved all the postage. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. So um, so one thing that I do want to point out about the, the dropship area of bulk mailer is um, is when you open up that that dropship uh, screen inside of bulk mailer, there's a there's a little tiny button that says analyze list. Okay. And what that'll do is it's going to actually go through your list and it's going to try and find which pieces would generally be going to the different facilities that the post office has on hand. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you those numbers. It's going to give you the, the number and, and the approximate weight. And because obviously, if you're going to be the one driving the truck, there's a cost to that, sure. right? You have the driver, you have the cost of the gas, you have the cost of that truck not doing some other work. And so, so you know, you, you don't always want to drop ship. You want to make sure that it's going to, it's going to have a benefit for you. And so using that analyze list option, you can actually see how much mail is actually going to get you that new rate. So you can, uh, so you can actually do that calculation for yourself of, okay, is this really going to be worth it for this location? Cost benefit analysis. Exactly. That's kind of exactly. cool too. That's powerful. Yeah. So it's, it's just right there. There's a little button there. You can just click it and it'll, it'll run a a, a quick a quick estimate right it's it's not a it's not an exact science because it's not actually doing a sort at that sure. point in time but but it'll allow you to get a general idea ballpark of, what know whether or not to call the driver in exactly gotcha. exactly so um so one thing that i did want to point out with the um with the the drop ship locations is um there's a, a special discount that you can get for flats um, if you're mailing saturation, that oh really is 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 pretty significant. So we actually have a question here, Tom. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and ask this, but I'm laughing a little bit. He's wondering whether you could uh, use one of those brown trucks to ship your mail to the SCF. You can actually. Oh, so this isn't a funny question. That's actually yeah, and um and add actually so so not specific to 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 the the brown trucks, but there's a there's another shipper that has an arrow kind of in their symbol there, and uh, and they actually have a a whole kind of network of drivers for hire that you can you can say okay I have a pallet of mail or I have a you know some of this mail that you can actually I had no idea yeah, yeah. I read Tom's question here and I thought why would you do that but apparently yeah, you, can. You, you would do that yeah but I mean if it's something where the discount is going to to, to in postage is going to pay for the cost of the shipping 
then why wouldn't you? I, it makes complete sense now that you describe it yeah. that way. But <laughs> yeah, my initial read was, hmm, why would you? But uh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's pretty neat, and uh, and for for. Uh, flats you can actually get if you if you're doing saturation you can get a pretty significant discount if you think about um, the cost of a saturation flat you can actually get it down to to less than 16 cents a piece and I know you're gonna like this because that triggered Ken to ask for your opinion okay Ken wants to know what you think about open and distribute um, open and distribute is actually a really uh, a really useful tool especially okay, in tell the... me what it means first okay so open and distribute um, also called PMOD PMOD uh, is priority mail open and distribute and so what you do is this is uh, this is actually a service that you can use where you're using the USPS as your shipper which is kind of an interesting thing. So if you have a tray of mail, so you're not shipping a pallet, usually a pallet you would send through FedEx or you'd send through through um, through UPS, but uh, or there are several other logistic companies that are out there as well. Um, but if you, uh, if you just have a tray of mail, right? If you're a smaller mailer, you don't have a full pallet, but you have a tray that's going to a specific carrier or a specific zip code. What you can do is, is there's the sleeve that goes around the tray. Mm -hmm. You can stick a priority mail sticker on the top and with the special instructions of open and distribute, and you basically ship it to the postmaster at that zip code. What they do is they see it and they say, oh, okay, this is an, uh, this is an open and distribute you know, tray. So they open it and then they can actually dole out the mail from there. And, uh, and, you know, depending on what the cost is for that priority mail shipment of that tray, you can get those saturation rates or you can get that, that DDU rate for those, uh, for those pieces. And, uh, and it can pay for itself if you have the, uh, if you have the, the volume for it. That's so, kind of cool too. There's yeah. a lot of ins and outs here. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways that you can get, um, that you can get these, these entry discounts that mean, don't mean you have to have a whole pallet of mail. Gotcha. Yeah. That's very so cool. So it's, it's a pretty cool service, and, uh, and, and it's, it's not terrible to use, so it's, it's worked out pretty well. So we're, we've got a lot, and we've still got a lot, a lot of stuff to cover and not a lot of time left here. So let's talk a little bit about palletization since we talked a little bit about that. And um, it used to be that pallet, palletization was just more of a requirement for, for just getting stuff around your warehouse. So if you have the volume to pallet your mail, it just kind of made sense from a logistical purpose. Um, for period for periodical mailers, there's uh, there's actually a discount for um, for palletizing mail just because that's um, that's something that the post office put in place several years ago to be able to pay for a pallet versus a sack versus a bundle, and so there are some discounts that are available there with periodicals. However, this year with the postal changes that they put into place, they actually just introduced a pallet discount for standard mail flats. And so this is kind of an interesting thing. They're, um, obviously, everybody is kind of familiar with FSS, it's the flat sequencing system, those new fancy the machines, cool machines that they, they have. Yep. They're, they're, they're pretty cool, they're pretty, uh, a little awe-inspiring. They're huge. Noisy. They're they're actually not as noisy as you would expect, hmm. but uh, but they're the the technology behind them is pretty is pretty fantastic. But um, the the post office obviously wants a lot of people to be using FSS. They also really want to be able to automate the process, and so the first step in the automation process for FSS is taking a pallet, and they have this machine that basically dumps a pallet onto a conveyor belt. And so they would really prefer it if the mailer would prepare that pallet rather than the post office having to combine a bunch of bundles to, to make that. So they actually have offered for the first time this year a discount for palletization of FSS flats. So uh, so there's actually a 3.3 cent difference between just a regular FSS piece and a, and a piece that's actually on a, uh, a pallet specific to an FSS scheme. So that's going to be a, a specific set of zip codes that they're going to be running at a certain point in time in their day. Now, we have a webinar coming up uh, in just a few weeks where we're going to talk about, I don't have the date in front of me, but we're going to be talking specifically about palletization. So that's kind of timely, kind of cool. Yeah. So there's... Get to learn the new rules yeah, right along with you. Yep. Yep. And this is a brand new thing that they just started offering. So it's it's something that, you know, before standard mailers were just like, okay, palletization is, is for me. Well, now it's also for discounts. Very cool. Yeah. 
All right. So we we wouldn't uh, be doing a, a a session about discounts if we you didn't talk about full, full service. service. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got to keep keep lining on it because this is something that um, you know it's it may not be a requirement today, but it's going to be. So for those of you who have not gone to full service intelligent mail barcodes, just do it. It's not that painful. It's really easy. Bulk Mailer has everything that you need today to make full service work for it you. It makes sense to do it for the discount, but I'm sorry, you've been threatening this. It's going to be <laughs> mandatory for at least a year now. Uh, it's been several years, but um, it, so there, there's been a lot of, uh, of court information that's gone back and forth, and Bob's been talking about that in our Postal Affairs um, what, uh, program. The program. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're calling it? It's, the Monday, it's every Monday morning. I, I always think mm -hmm. of it as a podcast. It is sort of a podcast. Yeah. But, uh, yeah it's a, it's, so, we blog every Monday morning about uh, the news that you need in postal going into the week. Yeah, yeah. And so there's been a lot of activity this year about, um, there's been a lot of court cases around full service. So obviously a couple of years ago, the post office was saying, okay, full service is going to be a requirement. And then the PRC came back and said, no, you really can't do this because there's actually a rate impact to it. And so then, of course, the lawyers came out and they've been fighting it out over what really is a, a you know, a rate impacting requirement. So, um, so the, this uh, is going to be interesting. The USPS has been asked to define an intelligible standard. That's, that's what, that's <laughs> that's what the, the attorneys yep. came up with. Yeah. So they, so they have to define like how much of a, of a regulatory change really is a, a rate change. And so, you know, cause they could just say, okay, from now on, in order to get a discount, you have to have, you know, a puppy on the front or something like that. Well, that's, there's a cost to that. So <laughs> puppy on the or front. whatever they, whatever they decide to 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 do but you know there's obviously a cost to the mailers and so i'm so going to hold out to, for an intelligible standard that's right it, i i'm sure it will not involve puppies so although that would make the mail more cute so <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah for those of you who haven't gone to full service just do it. It's really easy. Um, Bulk Mailer has everything you need, including all the electronic documentation information that you need is already built into Bulk Mailer that you have today. And uh, and even for just a, a, a small piece count, you can have savings with that. So even though the discount is really small, it does add up over time. So um, so it, it behooves you to, to make that switch. And someday it'll be mandatory. Someday you know, they may wind up increasing the discount at a certain point, you know, and it's it's worth it just to um, just to be ready for that change when it comes. And to be fair, the last st statistic that I heard was 80 percent of mailers have made it to full service at this point. 80 percent of volume. OK, I volume. Mailers. Yeah. All right. So my, so my Christmas list doesn't count. I'm going to throw out here that we're just a couple minutes before the top of the hour. We've got a couple of slides left. If you have to drop off. We're recording this. We'll be posting it up on satorisoftware.com. If you can stick with us, we've got a few more, uh, just a couple more quick slides, and then we're going to start chewing through some of these questions. So we're going to run a little long here. <laughs> Please hang out if you can. Uh, if you can't, like I say, come on back, check out the recording up on, up on the website. Yep. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this up. All right. So, um, so the next thing is to actually look at the postal incentives that the post office has in place. So I, I outlined here what the uh, the calendar is for this year, but the post office is offering two percent discounts on certain types of mail that um, that are prepared for certain areas. So basically, they're like sales. You know, basically they're saying if you have a specific type of makeup of your mail, you can get a 2% discount on your postage. So um, so for the remainder of the year, the last quarter of the year, there are going to be three incentive programs that are active. The first is the Color Trans promo promotion, and that's available for first class mailers. And what that is, is if you are if you have a mail or a, a um, an invoice or a statement that um, that you actually print some dynamic color on the on the actual invoice or statement itself with some type of either an advertisement or education piece to it, then you can get a 2% discount on your first class mail. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's 2% just straight off the top. So. Uh, so that's kind of a cool little program that you can that you can have there. Why do you suppose they chose that? They just want the mail to be more colorful. Well, they they've actually found that that um, having dynamic color on an invoice or statement actually can um, can be an in 
a really good way to advertise or to educate the male the uh, the male recipient, and it's more noticeable than just your standard black and white invoice. Hmm. So um, so it, it it's kind of that whole idea of making mail more impactful, increasing the mail moment, and uh, and and having that more interaction and, and engagement in your mail. And I suppose anything that makes mail more effective is of course good for the USPS. So they they yep. make it back because people are more likely to use mail. I get it. Yep, right. yep. It's 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 that virtuous circle, right? The yeah. circle of mail. <laughs> that's right. So um, so another 2% discount that's available through the end of November is the Emerging and Advanced Technology promotion. Um, this traditionally was kind of the NFC promotion. So for the, so people who have those uh, the fancy Android smartphones that uh, that you can touch a chip to it. Rob has one of those. I'm, I'm stuck in Apple land, so I don't have that yet. But, uh, but if you have an NF NFC chip that's embedded in your mail piece, then you can actually get that discount. But the interesting thing is they actually added a few new things to this promotion this last year, where um, if you do some really interesting things with the types of inks that you use or the type of paper that you use, you can get this discount as well. So um, if you were at the National Postal Forum, they had a whole uh, a whole catalog of different ways that you could activate this promotion. And one of them is just like textured paper. And so there was an example that basically the paper felt like sandpaper. It was really rough. But by using kind of those into those uh, innovative paper types and, and and ink types, or if you use um, NFC, or if you use some interesting variations of the hmm. QR codes, then you can actually qualify for this discount. So no way that could go wrong. Sandpaper <laughs> in the mailing system. <laughs> Well, obviously you would want to you would want to cover on it, but uh, I was yeah, say that's hard on machines. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's not it's not quite like sandpaper, but it's it's kind of the textured. So it was it was really interesting. Um, so and then the, the last promotion, the that's beach gonna... resorts will all be using that next year. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. Thanks. Mm, yeah, I should I should be in marketing. <laughs> there you go. So, um, so the last one we wanted to talk about was the Mail Drives Mobile Engagement Promotion. This is something that they've been running every year at the end of the year. Where Can you combine these? Unfortunately, not. So, uh, if you if you want to have um, if you have two of the incentives running at the same time on the same mail piece, then then you only qualify for for the two percent discount. That would be really cool if you could, though. Um, they, unfortunately, they're, they're they're the post office is is trying to be really selective about these different things. So, um, but there's the mail drives mobile promotion that's running through the end of the year. So if you send out a mail piece that drives a recipient to a mobile shopping cart, and then they, they, um, they purchase, you know, they, they have that, that direction there, then you can get that 2% discount. And then you get an additional discount if you actually fulfill those pieces that that end piece with priority mail. So, um, so there's, there's kind of two sides of that promotion that are available. Okay. So that, that was, was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I got, uh, I got eight total ways to save money here. We got the, uh, origami fold up your mail was number one. Uh, second ounce for free. That was pretty cool. I had yeah. no idea. Why not double the mail that I'm sending out? That's kind of fun. Uh, clean up your list. You gave us a bunch of examples on how to clean up the list. Uh, carrier route. Right. Sort the mail. Save big bucks. That one was, I think that was the biggest cost savings I saw go up on the screen. Uh, combine your smaller mailings. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's not quite commingling, but that was the word that was stuck in my head there. Uh, use entry locations appropriately. So right. if you're sending all your mail to San Francisco, it always seems like the example you use. I think you're, <laughs> you left your heart there or something. Um, like that. Put your mail together and ship it down there. Get it ready to go. Palletization. Mm -hmm. So uh, pull stuff together such that, uh, you know, uh, combine it together, get it on pallets. And uh, well, what was that last one? So that was about using the incentives. Ah, incentives. I didn't finish the word because you stopped talking. But uh, <laughs> incentives come up with ways that are, are used the creative offerings of the USPS. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Perfect. Now, this webinar is part of our Getting the Most Out of Bulk Mailer series. And uh, it's a series of webinars that we're continuing to do. Interestingly enough, next week we've got another one. And uh, we're calling it Bulk Mailer Tips and Tricks. Now, you know Baird mm -hmm. up in our support. This guy is smart. He knows the products inside and out, upside down, three different ways to Sunday. It turns out that there's some hidden functionality within Bulk Mailer. Mm -hmm. There's some 
interesting things, tips and tricks that the support people sometimes use to work people around. There's some stuff. There's some fun right-click functionality. There's some, anyway, there's stuff that isn't necessarily exposed. And uh, so, Kim, we're just going to go right around the product owner here, and we're going <laughs> to we're going to expose these bulk mailer tips and tricks, and we're going to talk about that next week. So, kind of fun. That's 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Central, 12 p.m. Eastern time, but we're going to go deep into bulk mailer, into the, uh, the all the secrets. We're going to give away all your secrets, Kim. All that <sighs> stuff that you built in there, but you didn't document. Baird has promised to lay it out there for the customers. So, let's see questions. Let's uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, can you ship EDDM in postage trays? Yes. Yeah. So if you want to do EDDM and use that priority mail open and distribute feature, that's probably the best way to um, to get the most out of your ED, EDDM piece. Let's see. Uh, questions about data services. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody wants to get into data services, wants to do suppression and that kind of thing, is that included in bulk mail or is that that's an add-on? Yeah. So it's it's kind of an interesting add-on because um, because data services is kind of a um, is based on how much you use. So it's not like a set price like you would have for palletization. So um, so what you would do is you would contact your account representative here at Satori, and you've got the number on your screen and the email address. And uh, and then they would be able to sell you credits. So basically, it's it's kind of a it, it's kind of an a la carte menu. You select which services you want to apply, and then uh, and then you apply the credits towards towards your mailing. So um, and then you would just go through the data services wizard. There's not really much on the software side to activate. It's just making sure that you have those credits in your account. But based upon the savings we've seen here, it's uh, quite likely that, I mean, credit, the credits are pretty cheap. I, I, I don't, they're pretty they, inexpensive. They, they don't yeah. trust me with these numbers, but they're, <laughs> uh, they have various different packages. You put those together, then you get those, then you run it through and you end up saving money right off the bat, as we've seen here. Yeah. I am going to throw out, and we've, we've talked about this. Go ahead, call sales. They're not going to try to sell you something you don't need. So don't worry. Nobody's going to say, well, you know, if you buy 40 billion credits today, <laughs> there's a special. They're not, they're not going to do that. So uh, feel free to call. There's, it's We're not a high-pressure shop, so nobody's going to try to push you anything, into anything that you can't use or you don't need. So yep. feel free to check that out. Sales is definitely the ones to talk to on that. Let's see. Um, yeah, I, I was going to throw this out there. Hey, Bruce, uh, you're right. So yesterday, so we got this um, system that we're using to promote the webinars. And yesterday, of course, I sent out the tips and tricks email. And uh, somehow the link at the bottom uh -oh. doesn't function. So, hey, Bruce, we're going to be following up with a link that works. We're going to find somebody who's much smarter than me to fix that mail and send it out. But, uh, yeah, I'll take credit for that one. I I, uh, some, I must have fat-fingered something somewhere. So, yeah, uh, stick with us. Uh, we'll get that fixed and, and turned around. I know that uh, I left a note for our, our webmaster, and she's working on it today. So they should get that turned around this morning. We'll get it sorted out. Feel free to go up onto the website in the webinar section. You'll see that. But uh, you're right. Um, ECOA, where do I find that? So that's available in the data services. So okay. And that's an add-on as well. So data services is, like I said, it's kind of like an add-on, but it's basically, it's it's based on your usage. So it's going to be in the, the address quality section. So if you go to address quality tab, right there at the bottom is going to be data services. Um, that's where you would create an account. Um, and then you can either purchase credits directly through Bulk Mailer, or you can contact your account manager to see how many credits would, would apply for you. Okay, now Tom's got a, a question for you here. Mm -hmm. Tom says, we are a B2B mailer. Mm -hmm. Okay, with me so far. How do we get the most out of NCOA and ECOA? Specifically, it seems that we get mixed results when our contact employee moves to a different company. How do we discern between a person moving and a company moving? Is it possible to keep both addresses? Yeah, so that's kind of an interesting one. And, um, and I'm... I, I'm going to confess I don't know too much about how the business moves ha work in ECOA. However, in NCOA, it, the only business move information that you will get back should be the actual business move. And there's actually a flag that gets returned with NCOA that identifies whether it's a business, an individual, or a family that's moved. And so you can kind of look if you're if you're doing primarily B2B, and if you get any uh, any move flags that say F or I 
that's for family or individual, then uh, then you're going to want to filter those out because that's going to be a case where the individual has moved. So maybe the post office doesn't isn't aware that that's a right. um, that that's a, a business. Then uh, then you'd obviously want to take that information and, and and run with it. But we do flag what uh, what type it is, and uh, the post office generally says that they don't return individual moves. So for example, if, you know, if, if someone was working for ABC company and then they, they decided to, to go and work for another company and they filed a move with the post office, the, then their mail actually should not be forwarded. So. Full service. Mm -hmm. What's it take? How do you select it? How do you turn full service on in bulk mailers? So, so for, <laughs> you sold me, Kim. What do I need to do? So for full service, it's really easy. You'll need to have a mailer ID, which you should have already if you're using the intelligent mail barcode. You'll need to make sure that that mailer ID is in, is in the uh, the mailer ID section for your permit there. Um, on the uh, there is a their entire page called intelligent mail. And there's a flag on there. There's a checkbox that says full service intelligent mail. You'll want to check that. And that's going to make sure that all of your barcodes are unique across your mail pieces, your trays, and your pallets. So you'll check that checkbox and that'll turn on the unique barcodes. And then the last step is you're going to need to use electronic documentation, which is either mail.xml or mail.dat. So um, so you can fill out the mail.dat information in the posted in the uh, mail sort wizard to generate a mail.dat file. Or after you've done your mailing, after you've done your sort, you can go into the submit tab in Bulk Mailer to walk through the steps to submit using mail.xml. So it, Bulk Mailer really just walks you through the process. It all starts with that checkbox on the intelligent mail settings page. Check that box and then submit your electronic documentation. And that's really all there is to it. And if I recall correctly, there was a time when you were saying full service was going to become mandatory. Mm -hmm. And we did a webinar on that, didn't we? Yep, yep. Up on the website, there should be a webinar if you're really interested in full, full service and digging into it. All the details are there. And that one had some product uh, screen captures and things. There was some walkthrough on how to get there. Right. We do appreciate those folks who uh, stuck with us here all the way through. And I'm going to... Uh, uh, Ronald asks here, he says, uh, Ron says, uh, can you mention again the analyze list? Where was right. that at? So that's, that's, uh, that that's sounds in, intriguing. Yeah. So the analyze list feature is in the uh, is in the, the postal discounts page. There's that button for the PVDS or the plant verified drop ship. So if you could, right next to the, the little checkbox that says PVDS, there's a there's a select button there. And uh, and that's going to be on that screen that shows all the different postal facilities. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we didn't follow up on your question here, um, again, I appreciate you sticking with us. I know we've run way over. We try <laughs> not to do that. But uh, Kim and I got to talking and of course, there's money to be saved. No. And so my apologies, but we did run over. If your question didn't get answered, we generally try to follow up with those uh, behind the scenes. And so we'll I'll be passing along the question log to Kim and that kind of thing. So uh, again, webinar next week, uh, I will be fixing the link for that. So feel free to go check that out up on the website. It should be uh, up and corrected here. Uh, well, with any luck, it's already corrected, but uh, should be corrected here very soon. So uh, let's see. We appreciate your time. We really honestly do, both Kim and I, and of course, everybody here at Satori Software. And I would like to thank Kim Mock. appreciate you coming in and spending a, 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 more than an hour talking about this. Hope you had a good time. I did, thanks. Some great slides, thank you. There's a, there's a lot of money to be saved here. It turns out it's pretty straightforward. Right. You can spend a little, save a little, and some of it you can save just for doing things a little differently. Right. Do want to thank Kim uh, for coming in. Appreciate it. Always great to have you here. We are very glad you could join us. And thank you to everybody who tuned in today. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, if you would complete the survey, you're going to be presented when you log out of the webinar here. Put your comments in there. Uh, like I said, we've got your questions. We're good there. But we'd like to improve these webinars moving forward. Make sure they match up with what you are interested in hearing about. So fill that survey out. That stuff will come back in. And uh, we will modify our webinars to suit you. As I mentioned, this webinar will be available in its entire massive entirety uh, on the webinar section of satorisoftware.com. I will uh, start transcoding it and get it posted up there this afternoon. For Satori Software, I'm Rob Perrin. I'm the Director of Multimedia Marketing, and I've been your host today. Once again, thank you for attending this webinar. And on behalf of everyone here at Satori Software, I'd like to wish you Smooth mailing ahead.